How are you doing? Good. 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 So you were, you were a Fleetwood boy? Born and bred, 1954. Yeah. Um, so I lived through the really good times. This port was extremely wealthy. Yes. Uh, where we're stood now yeah. um, used to be the site of the North Euston Station, which was the furthest the train line went north. Yeah. And so from here uh, went the Ardrossan Ferry, the Belfast Boat, uh, the Isle of Man Ferry, uh, Stranraer Ferry. Yeah. Uh, in fact, Queen Victoria herself came through here to go to Scotland. Yeah. But, so it was Boomtown? Absolutely, with a, with a vibrant fishing industry, with yeah. the cargo docks, yeah. uh, a big wood port for the importation of timber. Um, all, all now gone. Yeah. And uh, of course, without the port revenue, associated British ports who operate the port don't have the income to afford the dredging of the river. This is the Wyre Estuary, and you can see that effectively everywhere's pretty dilapidated. But a project here, a tidal energy project, could bring this town back to life. I see the tide's coming in pretty quickly. It is, and if you look at the turbulence here, yeah. uh, that's an indication of the poor state of dredging here. Right. Uh, the water is struggling to get in, which means the water's struggling to get out, and that's a big danger, because if the uh, torrential rain in the foothills of the, of the Pennines uh, hitting this river, uh, sort of 10, 15 minutes after the downpour, yes. The danger is it can't get out. If it yes. can't get out, it's got to flood laterally. Yes, and that's one of the things that this project would do effectively on the flooding side, internal flooding, you could evacuate the, in, the water inland by actually powering up the turbines and pumping out the whole area. Absolutely. We've got six 20 megawatt pumps in reality. Yep. And those pumps, they will pump the water out of this river 10 times faster than the highest recorded flow in history. Really, hydroelectric power is the ultimate renewable energy. We're talking about tidal energy. So we're not talking about gravity and water, we're talking about moon power and water. A litre of water is one kilo, and that kilo of water moving at one metre a second, half a metre a second, three metres a second is powerful. So the amount that you can load up these assets is generally a lot higher than wind. And the wind farms cost a fortune yeah. because they've changed now. On, on the wind farm um, foundations, originally they went for solid foundations. Now they're going for moving foundations and they're going 300 metres tall. There might be 10 turning and the rest of them are just sat doing diddly squat. Yeah. Why is that? Because they haven't got the, the vessels, they can't go out because of the weather, yeah. they can't maintain them. Here was the site of Fleetwood Pier, Victorian construction, uh, typical of most Victorian seaside towns. As a child I played the slot machines on here uh, and, the, uh, and the prize bingo many times uh, and then an ice cream to walk home with when we came off it. It was burnt down about eight, nine years ago to the dismay of, of all in Fleetwood. My, uh, my grandmother, uh, part of the Fleetwood founding Ledbetter family, uh, out of a family of 13, seven, seven girls, uh, sorry, six girls and seven boys, six brothers were blown up minesweeping from this port. Over there is Hesham Nuclear Power Station. It should have been decommissioned some years back, but because of the British power crisis, they extended its lifespan. There are lovely people in Fleetwood, but things have got a little bit desperate. Behind us, the backdrop of Fleetwood is poverty, alcoholism, drug abuse. We never had this and we have to reverse it. And this is the only opportunity that this Victorian sea resort has got to turn itself around. To reinvigorate a town that has gone so retrograde in the years of my absence, we need a big project, a big national infrastructure type project that will bring in tourism from all corners of Britain and put Fleetwood as a town back on the map. We've got this huge resource in the United Kingdom absolutely huge resource, the second biggest tidal range in the world, just behind Canada. And it is strange 
that we're not using it. I mean, if you've got cheap power, you were saying that some companies are willing to relocate and, and get everything going here again. Any company will follow cheap power. Right. Uh, cheap power is the essence of manufacturing. But coupled with that, creating hundreds of really, really high value jobs. The engineering infrastructure to build them is fantastic. And the apprenticeship schemes, which is what I'd be interested in, get, get the youngsters involved in being uh, in engineering. They can learn these trades and then once they've learned the trades, they can go anywhere in the world. Harvests the power of the tide through the turbines also acts like a lock so ships can come happily in and out, creates a kind of safe river environment this side because you're never going to wash, get washed out to sea so there are leisure and sailing. Boats will be able to come in on a non-tidal basis, not sat outside waiting to get into the harbour and I think that everything for it from that side will be absolutely spot on for the town. People could come and safely go out on boats and do things like that. It's what we want and we've got it there. They don't have to go out in Morecambe Bay where they, they might risk going aground because they don't know where the sandbanks are. Potentially redevelops this land which is the most unloved landside harbour development I've ever known. The marina will then will be able to be developed a lot better because we'll get much more commercial and tourism interest, good facilities, uh, good leisure, good restaurants. In the town, uh, very little employment, a lot of, of benefit dependent uh, population and really no means forward uh, without something as dynamic as the wire tidal gateway. It's needed regeneration and it's needed a reason to be regenerated and this will give Fleetwood at last the reason to be regenerated. Leisure. Uh, facilities would grow and the, the infrastructure around it would grow so you get machine shops coming back because wherever there's a boat there's something going to break mm. and something's got to be manufactured or repaired etc welding specialists electricians fitters mm. it's a whole industry that could come back that we've lost and that's what we need in Fleetwood straightforward tried and tested construction methods we are in a, an environmental haven what we are taking great debate over is how to uh, make the transit with the minimum effect to environmental life fish mortalities of below three percent um, they do claim zero but you can't claim zero so three percent is the lowest benchmark but any fish mortality would be at the uh, or lack of fish mortality would be at the expense of maybe human mortality further up the river yeah, the with flooding. the flooding. If you recall the artist's impression of the construction, you'll see that one of the walls goes out, more or less where the ferry is on the quay there, straight out. And that will create, with a flat lock on it, this will create a boat mooring and, and marina area here. I've always wanted to see something of this nature happen for the area because not only will the barrage provide good electricity it will provide regular dredging which will clear the marina so it can be used for boats and there will be a, a proper size lot that could take a, a, a boat that would easily cross over to Isle of Man even Ireland from Fleetwood. So one of the major attributes of this tidal gateway is connectivity. Um, the rural village of Not End and its neighbours of Prezol and Stolmine. Currently it can take 30 to 40 minutes for an emergency response vehicles, fire police, ambulance to actually have a presence here. Uh, and that is, uh, has caused you know, a number of fatalities over the years. Uh, that will be cut down to about five minutes with uh, fire, police and ambulance resources on the mainland at the other side of the river uh, being far more accessible straight across the gateway. The gateway, of course, won't be open to public vehicles, uh, cars, etc. Because of the rural nature of, of the not end infrastructure here, uh, there just isn't the road configuration to take that load. And we have to preserve the rural aspects of the people who live here. The land is this flooding, flooding, flooding and they can't do anything with it. So they've, they've got lots of arable farmland they can't use. And what's happening now, especially in, in other places in Wyre that are getting flooded all the time, is they can't insure their houses. Tidal energy and flood defences 
all in one and a lot of other things as well. The Barrows de Rance in northern France, that's been running 50 years and people still go and stare at it because it's something completely different to look at. So it's a, it's a, it is a win-win situation. This is, this is how we protect where we live, you know, this is how we protect the earth that we live in, by um, doing sustainable uh, energy, but we also protect the place that we live by making sure that it's not flooded and that we can farm our lands and that people can live and insure their houses and we can have a good quality of life.